Hello and welcome back random YouTube people. Today we're going to be painting an accent wall behind the crib for our new baby. This is the first video I'm filming on my new iPhone 14 Pro with a nice wide angle view. So thank you viewers for helping me gather enough funds to make such a purchase. I really appreciate it. This video will be split into two parts. First, the painting of the accent wall, how to, and how to create a board and batten design for the accent wall. So we're going to color match this green in the blanket. We've gone with a dinosaur kind of theme and we've got this nice um, green color. And so let's take it to Lowe's. After color matching, I went with the just a cheap semi-gloss white and got the color match to that green. And we're gonna see how close it looks in real life when we're done painting, but it is pretty close. The lights in this room kind of have an orangish tint to it, but that's as close as Lowe's was able to get. Went through some color swatches and couldn't find the right thing, so they just scanned this image. And if you're doing that with these kind of, um, you can see all the different fabric in there. There's some white thread, there's some green thread. So that's as best as they can get. And that's what we're gonna go with. Let's pull the crib out of the way so we can have access to the wall. Just going to go around the wall with the microprepper cloth just to get some of the dust that might've built up over the years off the wall. Of course, making sure to get those baseboards nice and good because that's a lot of dust on these for sure. That's so when we put the tape down, it has somewhere to stick. Next, gonna go around the edges of the wall with some frog tape. This frog tape's a, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches thick. And we have to get right along the line of the wall so we have a nice crisp line. Here with our frog tape, seeing if I can get this up close on video, we're going to put the tape right along the edge of the wall there. This is clearly the most painstaking part, but just do as best you can. Remember, you can always paint over your mistakes if you need to. I like to pull it out far and then put a section down at one time, keeping the tape nice and firm. So this is a bonus room above the garage, and you'll notice that it has the slanted ceilings because of the roof. I guess there's one good point in having that is the wall is much closer to me, so I don't have to get up on a ladder. Now to try to help prevent me getting paint on the ceiling or paint on the side wall, I ran another row of tape, and that uses quite a lot more tape, obviously, so that's up to you. And I was trying to, you know, less clean up as possible. Next, we'll take off the wall plates for the coax cable and the power outlet. So whatever you have on your wall, we're gonna wanna take the wall plates off those. For the power outlet, I'm just going to put on some tape over the connections. Before painting, I'm going to take a roll of this brown paper here that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, um, and I'm going to run it across the floor so I don't get any paint on the floor. There's a little bit of extra tape picking off the baseboard, so I'm going to tape the paper to that Let's see how it goes. Now to ensure that when I take the tape off, I have a nice straight line, I'm actually taking some of my wall paint that I already have, and I'm gonna go around the border. That will ensure that when I put the new paint on, we're not gonna get any bleeding from the new paint. So let's go do it. Now we don't want it too thick, obviously, but this will help ensure that you have a nice straight line. Well, I got way more paint than I needed. Oh well, live and learn. So now we're gonna let the paint dry before we put on our first coat. When you get your paint, make sure you pick up one of these paint opening tools. They're really handy. You're gonna probably wanna make sure you mix out those bubbles in the paint and make sure that it's got a nice mix on it. And the next step, we're going to use our edge trimming paintbrush to paint the edges. 
So just like we just did with the other one, we're gonna go and paint the edges of our wall here. We're gonna do this all the way around. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and come back and do the rest. What I will do now is pour some paint into this tin. You can get these also at like a Home Depot or Lowe's or I can put some links in the description. I went with a metal one simply because it was cheaper. It was only four bucks for this where other ones were like, you know, six, seven, eight, twelve bucks for some of these things. And you can also get a liner so you can reuse the metal, but I neglected to get a liner. So you're gonna need a paint roller. Again, you can pick these up at a hardware store or conveniently on Amazon. And I'm gonna use these rollers simply because I had just already had them. <laughs> so these are some knit rollers and let's go ahead and put one on. I found this one coat high density polyester fabric with my other rollers. So let's give this one a shot. Now you might typically think to just go up and down and make your way across the wall. But if you actually do a pattern like this, where you put some on and then you go in like a W all the way across the wall first, by the time you go up and down, you'll have a much better spread and you won't have to use as much paint. Watch me. Now we're gonna get a nice layer of paint on this paint roller before we start going. We don't want it too thick, but we don't want it not thick enough. So just get a good, nice coating on it. Just kind of getting it all into the fibers of the roller here, but not too thick. So watch by W. And you're gonna notice now as we go up and down, there's less to fill with green because there's already some green on it. Now we're gonna let this dry before attacking it with coat number two. Now this wrapper says one coat. And that is pretty good. I could continue going with one coat, but if you get up close, you can see little tannish taupe colors coming through. So that's why I'm going to do coat two, even though this says one coat, so. Yep, you'll see that we need a second coat. If I zoom in, you'll see that the paint that was on the wall is showing through. That's because the roller doesn't quite get every little spot every time. And this is why, no matter how good you think you are, protect your carpet with some paper. While it's drying overnight, don't let your paint in the can dry out. Wash out your pan, your roller, and your paintbrush, especially if you're gonna plan on reusing these. Okay, that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment. Well, I let it dry overnight and it looks great. Now it's time to take the tape off. Now when it comes to taking the tape off, you don't want to pull the tape just like straight off the wall like this. Um, I'm going to show you an example up here if I can get this loose. So instead of pulling it off like this, you want to pull it off kind of like this where you have a nice angled edge so you're not pulling the paint straight off the wall but you're kind of just pulling it at that precision edge that'll help you not have any issues with the paint pulling off the wall. Just like so. A nice clean edge there. And you'll remember we painted on here before the edges with the wall paint. Could have been another like a white paint but 
You'll notice that we did that. We've got these nice clean lines and we don't have any bleeding because of the, paper, or the tape. So we've got these nice clean edges. Well, on the edges, it looks like I was a little too aggressive and I had tape to here, but there's a little bit of paint splatter that got away. So I'm taking some Clorox disinfecting wipes and I'm just rubbing those paint spots off. Got some on the baseboards too. The sooner you do this, the easier it'll be to wipe off, of course. You don't want to let it dry too much. It's probably should have done this before I let it dry overnight. There are only two places where the paint got beyond the tape, and it was close to the edges here. So I'm just going to get a regular fine-tipped paintbrush and put on the paint from my wall, which I have some downstairs, so not a big deal. Well, here's the finished wall. I think it's looking good. Remember, I'm matching the blanket green, not my shirt green. Well, here's the finished product. So we got a dinosaur theme and we're going to paint some little dinosaur footprints to hang on the wall as well. All right, here's our wall for our baby. It looks great. It's a really pretty green color, but I think it's missing something. All right, so I've decided to go ahead with the framing and the slats on the wall and paint those green too. So I'm gonna run a header, if you will, across the top and then we support it with two sides so that'll kind of frame it in. And, and every so often I will do the math, there will be some slats and those will all be painted green. I'm deciding if I want, you saw the B earlier, if I want the B to be flat on the wall or if I want the B to be right on one of the slats and kind of stick off the wall a little bit. I think back on the wall would look better, but I'm gonna have to do the math on that. Off to Lowe's to get some wood. I went to Lowe's and I picked up some of this wood. It is a one and a half by one inch and this little white planks. So we're gonna make a border around the sides and the top, and then we're gonna divide it um, in little panels, I'll call them. And we're gonna cut about nine pieces of these so I can have nine different panels. I think it's gonna look really pretty. I've measured and cut my first piece, now to do a test fit. I've gone ahead and marked the piece that's gonna go on the top. It is 125 inches long total. And so I gave myself a border edge piece here, and then I divided it so it's about 13 and a half inches. And so you can see that's gonna be the center of the post here and then that's the outsides. So it's gonna sit dead center on 13 and a half ish inches. And you can see I've drawn that every so often here, just to make sure that it'll fit and it'll look good. Another reason I wanted to drop this little template is to make sure that it's gonna miss these outlets here. So I've got a coax port and then I have a regular outlet. And you can see that the first port, or the border is gonna be over here. And then the first, uh, slat, I'll call it. It's gonna be over here. Plenty of room You can see it'll be here and then this one will be right up against the edge So I'm gonna have to push it over a little so it just sits off to the side of this coax port So you're gonna like, want to make sure you think of that before you start nailing boards to the walls Now to cut my side pieces are gonna be 61 and a half inches long Lining up the square And let's cut it. Just place the piece I just cut on top of the rest of the length of wood so I can line it up over here. I was going to cut the top piece on an angle so that it would sit flush with the angled ceiling. You can see I'm in a bonus room, but I think it doesn't look too bad just right up against the wall. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. But what I'm going to do before I nail this to the ceiling or to the wall, I'm going to paint this first and then I'm going to tape 
instead of doing it the other way around because getting and painting the top of that might be a little difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this first and paint the border pieces as well, or the edge pieces. Now I am pre-painting the header and the side pieces. So I've got my side piece. I'm just using this scrap piece to just test the fit. And because the wall is not perfectly straight, I think what I'm going to have to do is on this one that goes all the way across the top is to knock the back off at an angle. So I'd have to play with the fact that this part is sticks out a little bit more than the rest of the wall. So I can line it up a little bit better. Because what I don't want to do is to have the main top piece not look straight. So. I think I'm going to knock that off just to see if I can get a straighter piece. I'm just going to knock it at a 45 degree angle. Let's loosen that up and spin it up. Tighten this back up. Had that problem before. Don't mind the messy garage. This is what I really like about the Ryobi is that it's got the laser on it. So you can kind of line it up to see exactly what part of the wood you want to cut off without having to do too much manual measurement. It works pretty well, it's lined up great. I have two ideas, is to put the side pieces on and then drop the top one along the top and use a level and try to nail it in so it's even. Or I just put all of the vertical pieces in and then the last piece I drop the top horizontal one on I'm not sure what would work better, actually. I think that as long as these pieces are the same length, it should look pretty dang even, so. I'm using my favorite liquid nails to glue the side pieces and nail them to the wall. And then I will run the header across the top and then work on the individual slats by themselves. Because the header piece is 10 feet long, I'm using my eight month pregnant wife to help me put the header in position. With a scrap piece of wood, I'm hammering in the corners to fit flush. As I go along nailing this board to the wall, I'm using my three foot level to make sure that everything is indeed level. All right, I'm getting ready to do the vertical pieces and I've got a cold. So what I've decided to do is, I've got a little template piece and I'll explain. So in my case, the inside of these edge pieces from here to the other one, that's 122 inches. 122 inches divided by nine is 13.5 inches. Because my slats themselves are an inch and a half, that gives me about 12 inches. So I cut my template 12 inches, then I will use that to know the space between my slats. I'll hold it up and nail my slats to the wall using this template. As we discussed earlier, that slat to the left of the coax lines right up against it. So I'm going to make sure I put that one on first and then the next one between there and the right, I'm just gonna put it in exactly in the middle using my nail gun and my level to make sure everything is square. Now using my 12 inch template I cut, I hold that up to make sure I know the distance between each slat. Well, these have been bowing a little bit because when it gets tension up here at the top, it kind of pushes it out. So for the next couple, I'm gonna to try to knock the corner to 45 so that it will not have any tension up here in the corner. And hopefully that will prevent it from bowing out like this. But it looks pretty good either way. You wouldn't even be able to tell. Now just continuing the process with my 12 inch template to make sure each slat is the correct space apart. Remember to use your level to make sure your vertical pieces are square top to bottom. Fast forwarding. Well, here we are so far, it's looking great. Now we're going to caulk. I'm just going to use some standard white caulk and I'm going to use my 90 degree angle tool to make sure that I clear off as much of that as possible. So here's the caulking tool that I was talking about. I used to have a much bigger one, which was nicer, but this is all I could find. But you can see that this one has a 90 degree angle, which is what I'll be using to scrape off the caulk so I get a nice line. 
This all suite allows you to do different things. Here's a standard, there's a five, and here's an eight. And so I don't want to have that much caulk showing. I don't want any showing, so I'm gonna use this 90 degree angle tool. Now I would go out and buy a new one, but my wife is starting stress tests today and you know, hopefully very unlikely, but there is a possibility that we could be having a baby today if she doesn't pass those non-stress tests. So the quicker I can get this done, the better. Because this room is, of course, for the baby. I have a first little row of caulking in, and I'm gonna use this right angle tool. What I liked about the other one is there was more space to catch the caulking. And this is a little small, so I may have to just go in small sections, but just put it on and pull it down. And we're gonna paint over this, of course, so these little streaks don't matter so much, but simply you can see on the video that it is nice and square, and I can wipe off this excess if I need to, but I'm gonna paint over it. But that's uh, what I need. I want this to look crisp and clean. I don't want any round edges for the caulk, so that looks great. Here's my first line of caulk. You can see that I got it and I wiped down the edges a little bit, but it's nice and flat. Hopefully that when we paint, it'll all look good. But now, to just doing all of the rest of it. Fast forwarding, again. All right, so this just arrived from Amazon. I got myself some wood filler, Gorilla Glue High Performance, and I'm gonna use it to fill all of the nail holes. And on some of these vertical pieces, I had to drill in some screws because the nail gun wasn't doing its job to get it level. So I'm going to use this and that's going to be the last step before painting. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've changed clothes multiple times during this sequence. It's been a couple of days. Now it's time to sand these things. Get it nice and smooth. Well, it's quite a dusty process. I'm gonna get my Dyson out and vacuum up the wall, pretty much. Now time to frog tape so we can begin painting. And finally, it's time to paint. Just using that same wedge paintbrush I used earlier. After two coats on the slat pieces, I'm going back with the roller to do the panel sections so that everything is nice and sharp and clean looking. After giving the paint some time to dry, remove the tape and you're done. Going to need to do a little touch up paint here and there. But otherwise, it's looking pretty fantastic. Well, here we are before and after. I think it turned out really well. What do you guys think? The accent wall gives the room a great texture and really brings it all together. Add some dinosaur decorations and it's all ready for our brand new baby. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe.